Yeah. Th thank you very much mm -hmm. for coming. I know yeah. it's a long way from Canada to come to my little <laughs> office here. And I'm very happy to see you all again. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the book, thank you for asking to talk about the book. Mm -hmm. It there are several there are several starting points for the book and some of them you 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 just brought up. Mm -hmm. If I might speak first I think from Professor Ramsayer's perspective. Mm -hmm. As you know he published a paper in late twenty twenty. It's officially listed I think as early spring of twenty twenty one, but it, it came out in draft form in twenty twenty about it's a very short paper about the contractual nature of the work that these women did at mm -hmm. brothels, military brothels in Asia. The the contracts, the actual contracts that that we know that they had don't survive, but we know they had them because they're referred to in police reports and because they, they had to have the contracts signed and checked before they could go to these locations. So we know that they exist and we also know that people don't do this kind of work without some sort of contractual arrangement. Mm -hmm. And so Professor Ramsar used law and economics logic to try to understand what the nature of the contracts mm -hmm. was. And he was attacked vi quite viciously for this. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was death threats and <sighs> people showed up at his house and uh, he, people were trying to get him fired. They were signing petitions and I don't know how many thousands of people were signing these petitions to try to get him fired, get the article retracted. Mm -hmm. And the people who were stirring this up were the so-called scholars in North America and Japan, which is not surprising to me because I've seen them. I know that many scholars in North America are basically Stalinists. Mm -hmm. they're, they're basically little fascists. They don't have any intellectual curiosity at all. Mm -hmm. So that's what started for him. It, this book wouldn't have existed had it not been for Professor Ramsire's experience, mm -hmm. which is still going on. I mean, mm -hmm. he's still getting these, you know, this, this uh, really uh, unscholarly attack against him. For, for, for me, the background is a little bit different. I live in Japan, and I read a lot of books in Japanese, and I know that there's nothing in Japanese that in any way comports with this 200,000 sex slaves mm -hmm. thesis. It just doesn't, didn't happen. It just doesn't, it just didn't happen. I translated uh, Hata Ikuhiko Sensei's mm -hmm. book about the cover women, and I know that he agrees pretty much in the basics with Yoshimi Yoshiaki. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter which side of the aisle you come from. Mm -hmm. There were these women who, who were uh, providing sexual services for Japanese military it happens all around the world. Uh, in in my home country, the United States, we call prostitutes hookers. We call mm -hmm. them hookers because a, a general, a northern general during the Civil War, mm -hmm. had basically the same arrangement. He had women follow his camp and provide services to his men. His name was General Hooker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know that from Hotel Street, for example, in Honolulu, before men would go off to war in World War II, they would mm -hmm. stop by these brothels. They were lined up around the streets around the block. So I knew that it was a lie. Another part of the background for me was communist history. I've studied communism quite a bit. I know that you come from a communist country. Yes, mm -hmm. You can say from experience probably that communists lie. They lie by, they just lie. They always mm -hmm. lie. And I, I knew from speaking with people in, in South Korea and from reading some of the background work in Japan that there were a lot of communist sympathizers among people pushing this, this comfort women narrative. Yeah, yeah. And that came out later with the work that Professor Ramsar did with Professor Adima at Waseda University, also in South Korea. People have been uncovering the, the North Korean espionage connection mm -hmm. behind this comfort women mm -hmm. thing. And there are two, th the comfort women in history, it actually happened. There were women who worked in these brothels and that's, that's an historical fact. Mm -hmm. But then there's the comfort women issue, the comfort women problem, and that's pure communist propaganda mm -hmm. that's been used by North Korea and now via Code Pink in the United States and Women Cross, DMZ, and all sorts of other communist front groups in North America. It's being used by the Chinese Communist Party mm -hmm. against democratic alliances in Asia. So anyway, that's where it came from for me. And one other thing for me is that I had been in the American Academy as a graduate student 
And I knew, as I said at the beginning, these people are Stalinists, they're little fascists, they don't do research, they simply herd around an idea, mm -hmm. and anyone who disagrees, they, they batter them in really an old-fashioned Stalinist way. So I knew that when, when the herd was protecting this idea, that set off alarm bells for me. I mm -hmm. thought, why are they s resorting to threats of violence to protect this theory that really has no historical basis. So those were the, the starting points for mm -hmm. for us, I believe. I hope people will think about it and will think about really this, the, the racism that has gone into seeing Japan as the enemy mm -hmm. since the rise of this country, mm -hmm. the absolute refusal of Anglo-Saxons to admit that any non-white country can be an imperial power, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the fear of a non-Christian nation, for example, that's been that's been really deep. And if you if you look at the people who are attacking Japan, it's always the same white liberals. Mm -hmm. Sorry to say it, it's always the same white liberals. This is a deeply racist mm -hmm. attack oh, on Japan as well. So those those are some of the things that prompted me, at least, to write the book. Mm -hmm. So just a mention racism. And do you have any comment? Oh well, yes, I uh, also want to expand on that uh, because there is a a uh, very clear discrepancy in the treatment of this problem in Japan mm. where the emphasis on the factual side right. what exactly happened right. and uh, on the other hand in the United States and uh, let's say Germany where uh, that statue right. was uh, erected uh, a few years ago <coughs> so the, uh, what you say is that uh, it's a real problem the, um, uh, prevalence of uh, the racist attitudes toward most of these nations. So th this created uh, uh, the major difficulty in that uh, uh, dealing with that problem in the West, right. because uh, by default Japan is considered uh, almost like a sub subhuman right. uh, country that uh, committed atrocities. So uh, it is very uh, difficult to shatter that paradigm mm -hmm. that has been formed. Mm -hmm. That that's, comes from the yellow peril mm -hmm. that's in the 19th century and the early 20th, and then uh, the World War II, especially. Uh, so uh, in order to, to solve that in the United States, may, maybe the only thing uh, that will work is to uh, put an end to that uh, superiority of the United States, because the uh, that uh, national mythology, national pride, comes mostly from the victory in the right. World War II. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very, very, very difficult to, to get that. I just want to give an example. For the last few days, I've been reading the memoirs of uh, General Curtis LeMay, mm -hmm. the, who bombed uh, Hamburg and the mm -hmm. uh, thing. And, uh, he, uh, the memoirs were published in 1965. So at that time, uh, these uh, military men were more honest right. in what they think. So yeah. he uh, basically says that uh, uh, it was important to kill as many people as possible in Japan. And he specifically says in uh, this place that uh, uh, he claims that the entire population of, the, of Japan was uh, helping in the uh, war efforts by uh, producing things. So when he says that that's in uh, page three, 324, and uh, uh, targets were ordinary homes because that's uh, where the, some parts for the war, uh, war effort were produced. Mm -hmm. so, so he says that uh, uh, all you had to go do after the bombing uh, was to visit one of those targets after we'd roasted it and see the ruins of a multitude of tiny houses with a drill press sticking up uh, through the wreckage of every home. The entire population got into the act and worked to make those airplanes or munitions of war, men, women and children. We knew we were going to kill a lot of women and kids when we burned that town. Had to be done. So okay. that is the, the <coughs> basic attitude and uh, in a way I I, I not like it, but I appreciate his uh, honest, his uh, uh, vulgar, he calls uh, the Japanese Japs usually, and uh, he's obnoxious, 
but he's very uh, clear about mm. uh, what his ideals are. And uh, today, uh, they're using a much uh, sneakier type of uh, mm. attitude, like they're doing something uh, for democratization and uh, Japan is uh, still burdened by this uh, World War II right. guilt. So it should uh, accept whatever policies the United States wants to, uh, to impose. So, but I, I just don't know how uh, exactly can this be overcome in the in the West, because this on one hand is a lack of knowledge of history. But on the other <laughs> hand, that even if there is a knowledge, it it is usually distorted to fit their uh, mythology or agenda. So, do, do you have any idea what you think can be done, if anything? <clears throat> the quote that you just read is is shocking. I, I was thinking as you read this about the genocide charges that South Africa has brought against mm -hmm. Israel and mm -hmm. this is clear intent of genocide and it's never been, these kind of charges had never been brought where they should have been mm -hmm. in, from, from the beginning. It reminds me of something, what, what you say reminds me of something that I've been mm -hmm. thinking of recently is that the, the, the hatred that people feel towards Japan in, in the United States, and I don't know about, about Europe, but especially in the United States, is it, it comes from a, a level that's that's deep and and almost inarticulable. It, it's from a, a very it's from a very deep civilization, almost an id level origin of the understanding mm -hmm. of ourselves. Curtis LeMay to me was the twentieth century version of of, of William Tecumseh Sherman with the Northern General mm -hmm. in the Civil War, and he did the same thing. He didn't have airplanes, of course, but he mm -hmm. he used fire to commit genocide against the Southern people, and there was mass rape. People, this is, <clears throat> the United States is a, is a, is a myth. The, the, the myth that the United States is going around the world doing good, by that I mean Washington, not the people of America. Most people in America don't understand what's happening. But people like Curtis LeMay or William Tecumseh Sherman or even more recently people like uh, Donald Rumsfeld, for example, or even uh, John Kirby, who's a spokesperson now in Washington for the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. these, these people, uh, to put it bluntly, these people are, these people are psychopaths mm -hmm. and they, they feel that they have to kill people in order to affect some sort of American To, to, to your question about what needs to be done to overcome this, I, th I think it's hopeless without ending Washington's grip on the United States. I, I would be in favor of, <coughs> this brings us kind of pretty far afield, but the United States is, is a myth that's rooted in violence and based on racial superiority. After World War II, people didn't really talk like that so much anymore because the Nazis had ruined racism for <laughs> for the West. And so they began to speak in other terms, democratic nations and so mm -hmm. forth. And these democratic nations, as Washington understands it, these are people who are locked into the, the, the Anglo-Saxon led world order in Washington. But we don't say the white world order anymore. We say the democratic world order, the free world and so forth. But the way it works out is that Anglo-Saxons in Washington are in control of this world order. That's that's the way it it's, it remains. Nobody says it anymore. I mean, Lemay was remarkably honest. He was a he was a deeply vulgar man who, mm. who 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 probably would not have been able to do anything with his life except, as he put it, roast mm -hmm. towns full of women and children. I mean, that sort of man is a, is a sociopath. But the, the, the United States hatred for Japan is, is, it comes from a place that's very ugly inside mm -hmm. Washington's psyche. The comfort women issue, the more I've gotten into this, you know, what, what struck me at first, this is the first thing that really hit me when I was at Waseda 10 years ago when I, this whole issue blew up mm -hmm. about the comfort women. There was a textbook, the McGraw-Hill textbook, mm -hmm. and there was a passage in there that said that the comfort women were 
gifts from the emperor to the troops and so forth. You remember this yeah. from this book? And the people who wrote this book had no expertise in Japanese mm -hmm. history at all. One of the men was German, actually, and I think the Germans have used Japan as a as a way to lessen their own guilt. We've we've apologized for World War II, but the Japanese mm -hmm. haven't. This mm -hmm. sort of racism that comes back again mm -hmm. and again. Anyway, <clears throat> I looked at that textbook, and it was it had no basis in documentary history, in fact. But when people from Japan spoke up and said, "Wait, wait a minute." There's no record of any of this. Mm -hmm. They were called fascists and denialists mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and and racists and so forth. And the people who sang this were all white liberals. Mm -hmm. All of them. Mm -hmm. And most of them couldn't read Japanese. Mm -hmm. But they just had this this sense of superiority. That we, we are better than these people, these Japanese. How dare these Japanese people mm -hmm. talk back to us? That was the that was the basic attitude. Mm -hmm. I'm from the South, and I, I don't like white American liberals. I don't like, I don't like Northerners. I don't like, I grew up with this. I grew up from the Japan side, where mm -hmm. these white Northern liberals, they think that everyone in the South is barefoot and has no teeth and mm -hmm. is illiterate. Mm -hmm. And they think the same thing about Japan. They, they, they put Japan into a they, they, mm -hmm. they, they, they make them into this little, they, they belittle them. Just like they do to us and when we dare say wait 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 that's not how it was they call us racist and fascists and mm -hmm. white supremacists and so forth the same thing happens how do we stop this from happening i mean ending washington is all that i can, mm -hmm. all I can think of it's a washington problem it's it's deep-seated racism mm -hmm. and i'm sure it's against other places in the world too i mean mm -hmm. eastern europe gets the same treatment as as we do, as Japan does, mm -hmm. from Washington. Yes, the, uh, that is the uh, inter interesting point that uh, Germany uh, studied that uh, statue of uh, Isher in uh, Germany. I even wrote a letter to uh, some mm -hmm. publications. Mm -hmm. right. uh, but uh, the, what was published in their newspapers and by professors of history was a totally ignorant about the, uh, the what happened there in Japan. And uh, the, the paradox here is that uh, uh, Germany was uh, uh, subjected to that fire bombing of right. the Curtis Lemay, like Hamburg, Dresden, and, mm -hmm. and other uh, cities. And uh, that uh, what Lemay says that such uh, fire bombing basically shortens the, the war mm -hmm. because uh, when you scare people, it, uh, they surrender. Mm -hmm. But in the case of Germany, that uh, basically uh, helped Stalin to take much uh, right. uh, more territory that he could have uh, taken right. if uh, the uh, the Allies opened the Second Front in, in right. France earlier. But uh, another issue that uh, the the Germans uh, ignoring, but it's already uh, in books that were recently published that the rapes, the mass rapes of German women mm -hmm. uh, by by the Russian, most of the Russian uh, murder of uh, refugees. And also from the other side, from uh, the Allies, the right. Canadians and French right. also did that. And, and this is totally ignored. And, and they're willing to go all the uh, all the way to a far, far eastern country to lecture them on morality, right. which they, they don't see their own uh, problem. But uh, there's some some type of a uh, change that can very subtle in, in specific mm. in Germany. I don't think it's the same in the United States, but uh, maybe that is the uh, the way that uh, some uh, more honest approach to historical problem will help. But that's in Europe. Uh, mm, it in could United be. States, uh, There's something very strange that happens with with the comfort women again. Mm -hmm. the, the comfort women, they, they didn't. It, it that system didn't end with the end of the Japanese Empire. This is something that I think goes back to this this deeply racist approach mm -hmm. to Asian history. Mm -hmm. The comfort women were, they were simply brought back from the mm -hmm. field, as it were, and back to the Korean mm -hmm. Peninsula and made to serve the Americans. The, the comfort women were nationalized mm -hmm. by the South Korean government, mm -hmm. and American servicemen were patrons of the comfort women. You can say that they still are mm -hmm. at 
bases in South Korea, mm -hmm. anyone who's ever been stationed in South Korea, I've spoken mm -hmm. to American servicemen, mm -hmm. they will tell you that on Saturday night, you go out to the red light district mm -hmm. and you, 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 you walk from bar to bar, or from brothel to brothel, mm -hmm. and the, the women there, the, this is part of the, the unspoken arrangement, and sometimes it was actually documented, is, for example, Park Chung-hee, his, his, his presidency, he wanted to keep the Americans in South Korea to protect against the, the communists. So, so part of the, the way that he did that was to provide the Americans with women. Mm -hmm. Th these, are, these were called camp town girls, for example, or camp town princesses. It's a very mm -hmm. demeaning way of speaking about it. But the, the comfort women, it was part of a do domestic uh, licensed prostitution regime in Japan that was mil sort of militarized and exported so that there was a contract and these women were not being trafficked. They had rights, for example, if they had a contract, they were able to, to, to assert their own rights against the, the, the brothels and so forth. It was quite progressive and enlightened for the time. But the comfort women regime after that was nationalized by South Korea for the benefit of the Americans. Mm -hmm. But the Americans never, they never, they never talk about this. They never talk about the fact that they're still doing this. They're mm -hmm. still raping Korean women in South Korea, mm -hmm. raping them. I mean, they, they, it's sexual services that they're paying for, but there's no mention of this whatsoever. Mm -hmm. There's no mention of the fact that the, that the Americans did the same thing to the, to the German women. They also raped, mm -hmm. Japanese women en masse during the occupation. No one ever talks about yeah, this. There was the GHQ, uh, like a restaurant that uh, prostitution for pay under control of the Japanese government. <coughs> no one ever That's fine, about but this. it wasn't, uh, didn't last long. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, the same, uh, because in Korea, obviously, it's still ongoing. But in Japan, as far as I know, it was uh, just right uh, after the start of the occupation. The local governments uh, created this uh, license to right. brothels for Americans, right. which were very cheap, you know, but uh, eventually they shut them down. Mm -hmm. Because they the, don't know why. Uh, as far as I know, I've read some books about this in Japanese, is that the, the American wives and girlfriends wrote letters to the government, said, you have to stop this, uh, we don't want this happening. Mm -hmm. But it didn't stop. I mean, the, the, the governments just backed out of the system, and then the men went somewhere else. Mm -hmm. In Vietnam, People were, if they were based in Thailand or in Japan or in Vietnam, there, there was prostitution everywhere mm -hmm. that the American servicemen went. Another thing that they don't say is that this is, this is a very strange sublimation of racism into, into, into virtue that goes on with the United States when they win a war, when Washington wins a war. All the awful things that they did get buried and it turns into the greatest generation something. It turns into mm -hmm. some American heroism. The atomic bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, those were, if you if you ask people today, they will debate about whether it ended the war early or not. Mm -hmm. Like LeMay said, mm -hmm. that's not what it was. It was a, it was a scientific experiment on human mm -hmm. subjects. Mm -hmm. the, the whole thing from the beginning was a scientific experiment. They wanted to know what would happen if they dropped these things on cities. What would happen to the buildings and to the people? How quickly would they die? How many people would be irradiated? As soon as these things were dropped, within days, the Americans were in there with their instruments, taking measurements of what happened. It had nothing to do with military strategy whatsoever. It was it was a human experiment on... on yeah, they published a report, it's about published four, 500 on pages that covers every aspect of the effects of... Operation Paperclip, when they took these Nazi scientists from Europe and brought them to the United States, mm -hmm. we didn't... Americans think that we fought the Nazis. We didn't fight the Nazis. The CIA fought to get Nazi technology to Washington. Mm -hmm. The war was for an entirely different reason than, than we've been led to believe. I think the only way to stop this is to see what Washington really is. Mm -hmm. But so far, maybe some people are beginning to see it, but I don't know, this mythology is still mm -hmm. deeply mm -hmm. rooted. In mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the, the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, but I recently I found um, oh. Oh. 
it's a uh, uh, just recent uh, Akahata Shimbun on the uh, you, uh, oh right yes yeah, yeah. do you know that the, the, the uh, Professor Yoshimi Yoshiaki right. is still there promoting right the you know, comfortable in Japan right and we uh, I think we have to fight uh, Japan and I saw the Japan and right. do you have any uh, advice in Japanese people to uh, still, I think more and more people uh, have better understanding of comfort women nowadays. But, I wrote uh, something in Will about this recently. Yeah. This is the, you know, the, I think people in Japan, maybe they don't know what communism is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the fact that there's a communist party in this country to me is quite shocking. Mm -hmm. Communists are international terrorists. They, you know, the J Japan Communist Party is no different. I mean, they have a history of breaking with. The, the Soviet Union, I understand that they're not, that they're critical of North Korea and so forth. But a, co a communist party is, is a machine for destroying a society. And they will do anything, they will mm -hmm. use anything mm -hmm. to do that. You know, when, when Shinbun Akahata is pushing Yoshimi Yoshiaki's, and there's another person, there's um, uh, Nakano Koichi, oh, yes. who is at Sofia University. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. And he writes for Shinbun Akahata. He's been in talks with this chi. This man is, he, he's in deep in mm -hmm. the communist network. You know, the people who are pushing this in the United States, one of them is, uh, her name is uh, Yamaguchi Tomomi. She works in Montana. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. She is, she writes for Shinbun Akahata. She's mm -hmm. been in these symposia with Shinbun Akahata. The, when the North Koreans and Shinbun Akahata and the hard left in North America are pushing the same issue. Mm -hmm. Come on, I mean, this is not about history. Mm -hmm. This is this is a tool for destroying a society. Mm -hmm. Got to wake up, mm -hmm. see what's yeah. going on. So you have any kind of communism? Uh, I recently read in several sources uh, uh, from uh, Mateki Sensei's uh, institute that uh, they are working with a certain historian in South Korea, who is very vocal about. Uh, Debunking the, uh, the the comfort women mm -hmm. uh, issue. Do you know m more about that? That that, that's, that historian uh, represents some trend in South Korea, or I've been reading a lot of books by people. For example, Kim Kim Byung Hun, Hyun and uh, Lee Yong Hun mm -hmm. and Lee Woo Yeon and Liu Liu, Liu, Liu uh, Professor Liu. He was the um, mm -hmm. he wrote the foreword to our to our book. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people now coming up. People have, I think, in the United States, people have gotten this completely wrong. This is not about Korea and Japan. Mm -hmm. This is not a diplomatic issue. This is about communists trying to destroy the societies in all of these East Asian countries. Mm -hmm. And it's been presented very skillfully as, as Japan versus Korea, and this is an historical problem that we have mm -hmm. to fight about. It's not what it is at all. Mm -hmm. These are, it, the South Korean left, they have been, hitting on this issue from, from the very beginning. And the South Korean right have been pushing back, not not because they want to defend Japan, mm -hmm. but because they want to defend their own country from communist takeover. That's what's going on in these, mm -hmm. in these countries. Mm -hmm. It's a very important point that you raise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, from uh, my experience living uh, over 30 years in a communist country. Uh, the, the attitude to art history is very volatile. Uh, like in the United States, you have some at least uh, image of stability in the inter interpretation. But in the communist country, depending on the new uh, leadership that comes, the whole period before that is totally reevaluated. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a very, uh, very interesting feature of communism. Mm -hmm. So it is not uh, something that uh, is based on. Uh, like the objective analysis of the facts, it's always some uh, new interpretation that uh, uh, suits the, the new leadership. Mm -hmm. And this is the the problem is that like the uh, 19 uh, massacre came, uh, the, that international campaign that China initiated came when China became a real player in international mm -hmm. affairs. Yep. So mm -hmm. that's one was one of the tools. Mm -hmm which in the ways they don't understand that, that specific point. Exactly. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a very... Mm -hmm. Comfort Women too is the same thing. That mm -hmm. the, the, the issue started right when North Korea thought that they would have to negotiate with Japan over the peace treaty and they wanted to strengthen their hand. The same with Nanking. 
This is how communist governments work. They, mm -hmm. they use history as a tool of, of war. Mm -hmm. It's basically mm -hmm. just another aspect of politics. You're exactly right. Mm -hmm. China is, is, cl is classic. Mm -hmm. This they, they, they will use, they will say anything about so-called history to get mm -hmm. any advantage whatsoever. It has nothing to do with the facts on the ground. People have to realize this is the communist use, use of history mm -hmm. of the past. Mm -hmm. So recently, you know, the, the team of, transnational team of, uh, you know, I Rich, I published this book. Right. And, uh, okay, so, so this is a book. It's a wonderful book. I have it on my shelf back okay. here. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Do you have any comment on this? So yes. I think this is for Japanese audience, right? Yes, the, the book is, uh, <clears throat> it's most welcome. I, I just wrote a review of this, actually, just a couple of days ago for Nishioka Sensei's journal, Rekshinin Shiki Mondai Kenkyu. The, the book is, uh, I, I was very, very happy to see this book mm -hmm. published. I really want to thank the people who worked hard yeah. on this, Fujioka Sensei, mm -hmm. Monteki Sensei, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yano Sensei, yeah, and right, Yamamoto-san. Mm -hmm. All those people worked really hard yeah. on this. A couple points I wanted to make uh, that I made in the review is, one, mm -hmm. you know, Ramsar Sensei has been working on this problem for now more than 30 years mm -hmm. about contracts and comfort women and a very small part of his research mm -hmm. all of a sudden he was attacked why what is the timing behind this so all of a sudden he published his first paper on this in 1991 good point which i read the paper everyone who studies japanese law mm -hmm. and economics has read this paper mm -hmm. it's a it's a basic analysis of economic fact mm -hmm. he was perhaps lightly criticized but there was no international campaign against him in 1991 mm -hmm. why why now Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's something going on that these activists in the United States and there are some other communist sympathizers working in Southeast Asia who are joining this group of so-called scholars. They're not scholars. They're, mm -hmm. th this is the Kakunin Kyudan. These, mm -hmm. people are, these people are basically intellectual terrorists mm -hmm. who are doing this. Why now? That's, that's one point. So if you read this book, mm -hmm. which has Ramsar Sensei's comfort women work from mm -hmm. the past 30 plus years, you'll see that he's remarkably consistent. He's applying mm -hmm. a basic set of economic mm -hmm. principles and logic mm -hmm. to understand how people worked in the past. It's basic Chicago school economics. It's mm -hmm. not controversial. Mm -hmm. The second thing I wanted to mention is that in, in, in Professor Ramsay's work, you know, people in Japan know him for the comfort women issue, and they should buy this book and read it, the, 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 the Rompa book, mm -hmm. because it's, it's a beautiful book and it's a great translation. Mm -hmm. But his work spans so much more than mm -hmm. the comfort women. It's just mm -hmm. a tiny little part mm -hmm. of what he's done. So I, I hope that this will be the beginning of mm -hmm. translating his Zenshu. I hope mm -hmm. they get all of his work into Japanese. Because mm -hmm. he's done, you know, if you just look at the comfort women, you think that that's all he studies. But mm -hmm. that's maybe, I would say, less than 5% of his output mm -hmm. in wow. total. Only five percent, and, and maybe maybe not even that much. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's done books and papers about it's economic logic. So, for example, he talks about one of the papers that I really like is about sake. Mm -hmm. How do you use contracts to get the best taste in sake? Mm -hmm. How did they do this in the mm -hmm. past? How do you get the best rice and the best mm -hmm. water? Mm -hmm. He looks at Japan from an economic perspective and sees how people behave mm -hmm. in economic situations. Mm -hmm. Interesting, but. As you know, in the West, that's not controversial at all. Mm -hmm. That's some basic yes. Chicago school yes. economics. Yes. Yes. So I'm wondering why did this suddenly blow up into an international incident a couple of years ago? To me, the timing is very suspicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I just don't know, but uh, it usually has to do with the local policy. And local, I mean, the, in the area, in the Ch China and the two Koreas and uh, Japan. And uh, whenever there is some kind of a confrontation, it uh, always uh, brings down, brings back uh, some old historical issues right. that are put uh, into the fray as a, a weapon. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I just don't know what exactly happened. Mm -hmm. Maybe because they have been uh, uh, South Korea, so, uh, you know, the, the, the Treaty of 1965 right. that right. resolved everything, then. Uh, uh, I, I'm just not familiar enough with the, the dynamics of the Korean politics because it, it seems very volatile, very violent. It That's is. The, when uh, we visited uh, South Korea, the, along the planet uh, guide for years, 
says that uh, it is wise to avoid all political events because they can turn into it's true. horrible mm -hmm. violence and uh, you can be caught in the middle. It's true. So it's yes. The, mm -hmm. It's happened to me before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was walking down the street of Seoul once and I had gone to dinner with a friend and we were just walking down the street. And we had no intention whatsoever of doing anything political. We were just talking about baseball or whatever. Mm -hmm. And suddenly we heard, in the distance, we heard what sounded like a riot. And we looked down the street and this group of people had turned the corner and they were they were sort of running towards us and from the other direction we could see that the police buses were uh -huh. coming and we were in the middle of this and we didn't know what was going on we had no idea it, mm -hmm. it, it we had heard nothing in the news about this and we we ran down to the nearest subway station and as we went down the stairs we saw police in black riot gear with the helmets and the and the sticks coming up the stairs and we just jumped on the next train and, and rode as far as we could mm -hmm. we, we still don't know what happened we were just walking down the street and suddenly there's a civil mm -hmm. war that started in school. It's very volatile. But I'm thinking now, the timing might have something to do with the Black Lives Matter riots. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, people in the United States, they, and the people who did this to Mark Ramsire, they're just classic cowards. They don't have any mm -hmm. principles. They just want to protect their careers. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they might have sensed that if they, don't, if they don't police the party line louder than everybody else, their own mm -hmm. job is in jeopardy. So that mm -hmm. might have been it. That might have been the BLM effect that mm -hmm. everyone has to be politically correct or else you're going to be run out of a job. So they might have been little Maoists mm -hmm. getting in front of the revolution. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yes, and the, this is not the only his the whole spectrum of issues like gender issues, the uh, homosexuality, and the, uh, they are so uh, put into the center of uh, discussions in the United States. I don't know how uh, people see this here, but the, the obsession, it's so unhealthy in, um, with the things that are really not that important from a historical, social point of view, but they're raised to some kind of a life and death uh, issues mm -hmm. that uh, you can be fired. Uh, like, you know, Jordan Peterson right, who, right. started his career basically by covering these issues that uh, very few people in Canada dare to, mm -hmm. to do. And this is the, uh, like the comfort win. Maybe it's uh, in, uh, in a way uh, has a, a similar status to I think this, so. which is not a very crucial issue like a, from a historical point of view, mm -hmm. but it's raised again as a, something extremely important. Um, it's classic intersectionality. I mean, it has the feminism and the, the, <clears throat> the gender issues and the the race issue is involved, for example, mm -hmm. the colonial issue, all of it comes together in this one. I mean, it's it's perfectly designed by anti-civilizational forces in Asia mm -hmm. to destroy mm -hmm. a society. I mean, it's it's the it's the it's the it's the end all be all, the pinnacle of of feminism. Mm -hmm. when you think about it. This comfort women issue, two hundred thousand sex slaves, and so forth. When people hear that their critical faculties turn off. Mm -hmm. All they need to know is 200,000 sex slaves, and now you have Morgan and Ramsayer who are saying no, mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. must be white supremacists and misogynists, and we've been called the whole thing fascists, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and Mark Ramsayer was called the white supremacist by a, a someone who is a professor at Aoyama Gakuin Daigaku in mm -hmm. Tokyo. She called him in public on Twitter a quote-unquote white supremacist. Mm -hmm. I see for writing an eight-page paper about economic logic in World War II in Asia, a white, I mean, the, the, the fact that this comes out of someone's mouth so easily, mm -hmm. based on nothing whatsoever, that he didn't, Ramsar Sensei didn't write anything about race. He's looking mm -hmm. at how people sign contracts. It has nothing whatsoever to do with race or, or even with gender. It, it's just an economic logic argument. And suddenly people are and she wasn't the only one people hannah shepherd at yale for example white supremacist i mean and chatani sayaka who teaches in singapore she also has called him a racist that this is part of his racist campaign mm -hmm. what, yes, what, yes. <laughs> what, this is the, the, beyond the bizarre current version of communism or pro-communist uh like the supporters it's uh, purely destructive I, mean, I always compare it with the, because uh, people know very little about the East European communism, 
that been the, the real one, the Soviet Union and Poland, Bulgaria, Romania and all those. Uh, they uh, have some kind of a constructive intention mm -hmm. that, that their uh, idea was, that, according to Marx, that basically they represent uh, the newest development of the right. uh, means of production right. that will eventually overcome uh, capitalism by better production and uh, improving the life standard of people. Right. So it was a, a flawed in this sense that uh, that enormous bureaucracy, the, all the uh, errors in uh, managing economy right. basically destroyed that, that system but right. uh, they were planning something positive mm -hmm. the intention was positive but what we have now in the west it's purely destructive force mm -hmm. that, uh, I, i'm not sure if you can call it marxism or communism because no. it's uh, mm -hmm. uh, just uh, desperation because uh, the working class actually was deactivated mm -hmm. in the west right. because of its uh, mm -hmm higher level of uh, living standard. So they're looking for new forces that can uh, continue the revolution and they go mm. lower and lower. Yes. In the, mm. uh, the, so they're basically uh, relying on the people who Marx and Engels ridiculed, the Lumpen proletariat, if you don't know. Right. Uh, but that, that's what we have now here. It's mm. uh, absolutely destructive. I, I don't, don't see how uh, it uh, can be resolved uh, unless there is some major economic collapse in the society that will wake see. up the people. Maybe so. Mm -hmm. the, there's a book that came out recently called American Marxism by Mark Levin. He's a very famous mm -hmm. Fox yes, News kind of contributor. And I read the book and reviewed it. And I understand what he's trying to do and I appreciate it. But in the review I said that you know this really has nothing to do with Marxism. Mm -hmm. There's no... You know, Marxism is quite a complicated and complex ideology, mm -hmm. and you have to you have to read quite a lot of books to understand what Marxism is. Mm -hmm. And as you said, Marx had contempt for the lumpy proletariat, and he, he 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 didn't he didn't condone what was being done in the name of Marxism. He thought it was programmatic, like you said in, in Bulgaria and Romania. Mm -hmm. This is a, this is an, an attempt to better society because there was a serious problem. There was a serious problem with. The way that factories were staffed, I mean, the, the, the labor issue was a serious problem. Mm -hmm. And that was an attempt to diagnose and then cure it. The people that are in the streets today and the people that are in the political buildings today, I argue, are the same people. So, for example, you've got Nancy Pelosi, who sits in an office, and then you've got Antifa, who, who burned buildings down in streets. They're working for the same team. Mm -hmm. This is this has nothing to do with Marxism anymore. If you, if you open a book of Marx, you will not understand anything that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. This is demonic, I think, yes. what's going on. These people are, they hate human beings. Mm -hmm. This is what gender ideology is as well. I mean, they're, they're, they're cutting off the genitalia of children. Mm -hmm. How, I, I can't think of anything more demonic, satanic, than, what, than what's going on. And the people who are defending this are the so-called elites in big billion dollar office buildings in man, Manhattan in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. these people who are in the top of the buildings are now working on the same team as the people who are trying to burn the buildings down. It's because there's nothing Marxist about this. Yeah. This is insanity. Mm -hmm. This is a kind of Western demonic disease, mm -hmm. I have to mm -hmm. think. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm off base here, but this is not Bulgarian no, Marxism um, anymore. It reminds me in a way the I don't know the uh, the period after the February Revolution in uh, Russia, the Kerensky's uh, provisionary government when uh, everything started to fall apart right. in the, right. the, the despite the uh, intentions to pull Russia from the war, Kerensky continued, right. Right. which uh, created the disorder that brought Lenin to power right. in October. So we're probably in such a period. We're in September right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So I don't know how it will end, but um, uh, but because the, the, the Lenin at least had that Madame Marx's frame. He uh, basically distorted many of the the points of Marxism, but he had some positive uh, program. But I don't see anybody uh, in the no, in the West. I don't them. think so positive program at this point. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but now, 
We have published this book and your book. Uh, anything that the average Japanese should do to fight <laughs> against the uh, yeah. What do you think? I think uh, the um, the I think you no know, Ito San's this comment Japanese people become very coward and hiko and I think everybody should mm. get up the courage to Courage. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, and uh, uh, now, um, I think we should, s s Japanese people should know more about Japan history. Definitely, yeah. Though it's okay to look at you know, the Western countries, but there are so many good things about Japan. Yeah, I don't know. So. <laughs> Yes, I'm, yeah. um, I think that when comparing the Germany and Japan, they're treated as the same mm -hmm. evil by mm -hmm. the, uh, the Allies. Mm -hmm. uh, the positive uh, thing about Japan is that despite the occupation, uh, Japan uh, managed to preserve its uh, national identity mm -hmm. to a very, very high degree mm -hmm. compared mm -hmm. to Germany. Mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. Germany, that guilt mm -hmm. was so mercilessly imposed mm -hmm. that the Germans now cannot defend themselves mm -hmm. and that uh, like uh, uh, that uh, party um, uh, alternative for Deutschland mm -hmm. that uh, is uh, gaining support mm -hmm. it's very moderate compared to uh, the general the European politics mm -hmm. but uh, this weekend there were over one million uh, counter uh, protesters <coughs> uh, from Antifa Nazis who wanted to uh, basically ban it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that uh, uh, in, in Germany, the issues of the World War II cannot be uh, freely discussed mm. okay, because of all those restrictions. I, I have no specific comment, mm. I don't want to comment. But in Japan, you, you can, uh, at least that's my impression, mm. uh, you can write books and uh, mm. freely discuss whether mm. it's something is good or, or mm. not. Uh, like that, that book of um, uh, Moteki Sensei mm -hmm. about, uh, I don't remember the, the exact title, I, mm -hmm. I reviewed it, uh, about uh, how, how Japan could have uh, won. Oh, the, right, yes, yeah, I have yeah, that book. Yeah. Right. It's oh, nothing okay. like that can be published in Germany, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You cannot <laughs> say that. Yeah. But so. that, it's a, mm -hmm. that's why you can build up on that, mm -hmm. because uh, there is still uh, the, uh, the possibility of discussion mm -hmm. and uh, more people can learn mm -hmm. the, the true facts. Mm -hmm. so. well, I've <clears throat> been speaking a lot recently with, for example, Ito Kan Sensei, mm -hmm. and I've been reading a lot of books by Nishibe Susumu, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. and Miyazaki Masahiro mm -hmm. Sensei, and people who are, I, over the past year or so, I've turned against the the pro-American conservatives in mm -hmm. Japan, mm -hmm. because I see them as, I see them as sellouts. Yeah. They, you know, the pro-American yeah, conservatives. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I, I realized that this country is still occupied. It never ended. Yeah. The white, yeah. the white Anglo-Saxon mm -hmm. Protestants mm -hmm. are still running this country, and I, mm -hmm. the, for me, the, the thing that really pushed me over the edge was yeah. this LGBT bill when. Mm -hmm. A white man from Washington comes in, and and demands that the Japanese Parliament produce a piece of legislation that he wants personally for his own political career. It's obvious that he's mm -hmm. going to use this in the future to burnish his own resume so he can run for president, or whatever he wants to do. Mm -hmm. You have a, a white man from Washington come in and say to the Japanese Parliament, "We want." I want you to make this bill A, B, C, and D, mm -hmm. or you could say L, G, B, and T, <laughs> and they did it. Mm -hmm. They did it, and that, so that that was shocking. And then I saw people like Arimura Haruko mm -hmm. go on go on on into the media and say after that whole thing happened, and she she was one of the ones who I mean she's in the she's in the LDP, and mm -hmm. she you know she was part of the group. Her party passed this bill, mm -hmm. and then she goes on in the media and says Japan is a sovereign country. So we're being gaslighted here by these so-called pro-American conservatives. Mm -hmm. These mm -hmm. people are the worst of the worst. Mm -hmm. The communists are better than these people. Mm -hmm. The communists at least have an, 
at least if you if you dig a little bit, you'll find that they have a program for revolution. Mm -hmm. You can at least figure out who these people are. It's easy to understand. Yeah, yeah. But these pro-American conservatives, they pretend to be pro-democracy or whatever. But what they've done is they bought into the white American myth mm -hmm. of a perfect Washington. Mm -hmm. This is the group that committed genocide. I mean, go back to what you read that Curtis LeMay yeah. roasting women and children mm -hmm. in their homes because they have a drill press. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether that's true or not, I don't even know, but mm -hmm. so they have a drill press roasting women and children in their homes. Mm -hmm. And he writes this in a book. Mm -hmm. well, what sort of sociopath writes this in a book? <laughs> I roasted women and children. He got an award from, he got, he got a, an imperial award from the emperor. Yeah. Curtis LeMay, who committed genocide. I mean, it, imagine this is this is totally it's gonna sound hyperbolic, mm -hmm. but it's 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 imagine if imagine if the government of Israel gave the family of Joseph Goebbels an award. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. They committed genocide against these people. And then the mm -hmm. government has been so co opted mm -hmm. by the people who committed genocide that the people who run the government mm -hmm now work for the genocidists. Mm -hmm. That's what's happened in Japan right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. You've got these pro-American conservatives who mm -hmm. run the, Kishida is, he's the classic CIA plant. Mm -hmm. I mean, that man is, is controlled by the CIA. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the, the, the pro-American media. It reminds me of West Germany in the 1980s when mm -hmm. the CIA mm -hmm. was paying money to get people to write articles mm -hmm. in favor of Washington. Mm -hmm. It's completely corrupt. Mm -hmm. And no one says anything about it except for me. And when I say things about it, I'm attacked as a conspiracy theorist mm -hmm. for saying that Washington runs this country. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty obvious that Washington runs this yes. country. Mm -hmm. And as long as people here don't break out of that, of that myth that Washington did a good thing in the 1940s and they should be, they should be the ally of, of Japan, I think it, it nothing nothing will change. Mm -hmm. People will just go on mm -hmm. they will go on believing the myth because if, if you if you have to stop believing the lie mm -hmm. you you know Alexander Solzhenitsyn, I really love him. Mm -hmm. He said something that uh, almost every time I hear it it brings tears to my eyes or it mm -hmm. makes my hair stand on end. He wrote, Let let the lie come into the world, let it even flourish, mm -hmm. but not through me. He, he paid dearly with his body and his mind not to tell the lie that everyone else was saying. Vladimir Bukovsky, you yes, probably know him. Yes. He's a hero mm -hmm. to me. That man was in psychological prison mm -hmm. because he said, sorry, I think socialism is bogus. I'm not going to go along with it. Mm -hmm. People will have to pay a heavy price. You'll have to have Gandhi's in, in Japan, Vladimir Bukovsky's and Alexander Solzhenitsyn's you're going to have to have people who are going to suffer in jail mm -hmm. for telling the truth before Washington will fall in this country okay. and people will know their history mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else? That yeah. That's all? This, this okay. Yeah. okay, thank you. So maybe next time we should continue. <laughs> but that's all. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.